Hey folks, Krusty Old Marine here. Today we're going to go over a review and instruction on how to use the Forrester Case and Cartridge Inspector. That's the uh, trade name of it, but actually what it is, it's a concentricity gauge. And uh, I've had this for a couple of weeks and uh, had a chance to use it a little bit and give you my thoughts. And there aren't many videos out there on how to use it. Uh, Although it's a little bit of it's self explanatory and it comes with a decent instruction manual. But uh, anyway, let's get started. So, a number of little pieces and parts to it. Um, it's got this little swing arm back here. On the back of that, it's got two lock nuts so you can adjust how far in and out you want the gauge uh, up against the neck, the cartridge itself, or if you're checking the bullet run out. <coughs> It's got this spring-loaded tension holder here, a little V-groove down here uh, to set your, set your case in. And on this side, you've got a, I'm calling it the pilot bar. I don't remember what they call it. It's got a V-groove here uh, if you're checking bullet run out. Or you could even put it on the uh, case neck. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to set up. But this pulls out. And if you're just going to check the uh, neck or the cartridge itself or the shoulder, there's a pilot. The pilots are not included with it. This is a pilot for uh, 223. I've got a pilot for 264 for 6.5 Creedmoor and a pilot for 308. That slides in that way. And uh, it's got a little thumb screw you lock it down with. So let's go ahead and get this set up. <clears throat> So you want a little bit of tension against that. Snug that down. And now we have to get this set up. This is kind of a pain in the ass to get set up. Um, number one, you have to run your lock nuts out to the point where it's going to engage the cartridge case. And it doesn't, this arm really in my opinion, this arm really ought to be, this section of it right here, ought to be just a little bit longer because when you pull it over at a 90 degree, it's not quite at 90 degree. And I understand this is, the, this is about the smallest uh, case. This is the smallest case I'm going to be measuring on it. Um, but I think it ought to be better if it was over here at a 90 degree instead of at an angle because what that does <clears throat> when you pull it over this way, run this other lock nut out. It wants to push the gauge back past a 90 degree. So <clears throat> you've got to run it out just a little bit farther than you think you would want it. You pull that over. Eh, it's not quite where I want it. That's right on the shoulder. Uh, so you, you watch what other few videos are available on the setup of it. Uh, they don't go through that it's this much trouble to set up. I've used uh, my shooting buddy, David. Uh, he's got a Sinclair concentricity gauge. And I, I think it's a much superior product, actually. Um, this one is it's, it's time consuming in getting it set up. Okay, that's, that's one thing I can say about it. <clears throat> okay so I finally have it over here near where I want it I have to push this arm in now they say to preload it to about uh, 31 hundredths and once I get it there it wants to slip around you have to hold it and then really crank down on that thumb screw back there to get it to hold in place. Now, if you want to read a zero or reset the zero, 
there's a little thumb screw right here. You have to open that up and rotate your gauge around until it reads zero. And sometimes when you go to tighten it down, the little ball bearing portion of it moves or the gauge, you can see it right there, the gauge moves a little bit and you're off zero just a smidge. Um, I don't think zero for most of these measurements is that important. You're just looking for how far out it is. So, um, and then you got that thing holding it weird too. So anyway, you can see the cartridge right now is not sitting down in the V. It's centered on here. If I pushed it down to the V groove on this side, then it's going to be running a little bit on an angle and that's going to screw with your measurements a little bit. So that's one thing of it. One aspect of it I don't think is really well thought out. But anyway, let's go and spin it here. It's reading, eh, yeah, let's move that just a little bit. Okay, it's reading zero right there. Let's see if we can get it to stay. Now, every time I tighten it down, it goes off a little bit. So, reading zero right there. And I don't know if you can see it in the video, but we'll rotate this. It's loaded, loaded up. That one appears to be pretty good. It's going below zero on one section, maybe a quarter of a thousandth. So let's, let's check another cartridge. We'll pull that out. Oh, I've got it too tight. Yep, too tight. I'm going to have to readjust the entire thing. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to pull, it, pull that out just a little bit. Crank that back down. Okay, I can get the cartridge out now, so let's check another one. By the way, these are Jag uh, brass that I picked up. They've been clean. Jag is uh, manufactured in Manawalk, Wisconsin. Uh, Jag is short for Jagemann, J-A-G-E-M-A-N-N. -N. I'm not very good with Nordic languages, so I'm thinking that's a Jagemann. Uh, but we would pronounce it Jag, I guess. Uh, that is really, actually really good brass. It's on par with uh, Hornady Match. So let's stick another case in here and see if we can get something on it. Okay, I threw my zero off. <clears throat> and I'm not all the way there. there. Now I'm all the way up on the uh, pilot. And it's reading about point... It's reading about just over 92 thousandths. So let's uh, rotate that around. Up to about 93, 92, 93, 94, 90. So I've got from 90 to 94. So I got plus or minus two thousandths on that one on the con concentricity. Um, you can see how you could run it on, on out here and you could check the uh, cartridge itself if you wanted to. But um, Let's go and check a bullet, show how the bullet setup is. So to check the bullet setup, I'm going to loosen this up just a little bit right there, swing that out of the way. Pull this bar out. Slide it in the other way where I've got the V groove. And this V groove has screws on either side of it so you can lock it down in the position that holds your shell really well. What I've been doing is I've got one side snugged up and I've only been loosening one side and it allows me to move it a little bit but I don't have to come in from both sides to readjust it. So let's slide this in. I'll take a cartridge. This is uh, some ammo my buddy David loaded up for me back in Midsummer for some matches when I didn't have my reloading setup going. So we'll set that in there. And what I like to do here, I do press it down into the V groove here because I can adjust this V bar to where it's, it's level. So I like to take this V bar and get it just off of the, of the cartridge, push this down here and kind of hold it with my finger, push that in and then lock this down. 
Now I'm pretty well assured that I'm centered there. But what I've got to do now, and it's it's not a great adjustment, is I've got to adjust this V groove up to where it's just engaging the bullet. And I'm not sure if you can see that. It's that's pretty close. I don't want to go too far because I don't want to I don't want to get the shell cockeyed. But that looks pretty close right there. And then we'll snug this down. See a lot of a lot of steps. You don't have all these steps with the uh, Sinclair. I think the Sinclair is much much nicer, honestly. And again, you loosen the lock nuts back here. Get it to a point on the bullet that you want to measure. And keep in mind when you tighten this right lock nut down, it's going to it's going to throw this thing out a little bit, so it's going to move, which is kind of a pain in the ass and not a, not a very good design feature in my opinion. But we want to load that up a little bit. Yeah, let's see, we're reading about 55. Let's take that up to about, ah, see, that up to about 80, 85. Yeah, right in there would be fine. Anywhere is fine, actually. As long as you have a little loading on it, but not too much. We're just trying to get the gauge set now. And then you see it just pushed it right out of the out of the V groove there. And you've got to really snug these things down. Okay, well, it needs to go a little bit further. Yeah, see, this thing's a pain in the ass. It doesn't lend itself very well to going back and forth between, say, measuring just a case or the bullet itself. That looks pretty good. I'm going to pull this in to a point and load it. I'll try to. It's got some loading on it there. Snug this thumb screw down and let's see what we got. Now yeah, that one center is like maybe 35 down to 33. Yeah, it's actually it's actually from 33 to 35. So that one has plus or minus a thousandth is out and I'm not sure what everybody considers as precision loads. Uh, I would think a thousandth or less is, is pretty good on your bullet concentricity. Um, obviously the tighter you can get it, uh, less variation on it, the more accurate your ammo is going to be. So. But you can see how that thing moved right there. Now, and now I'm reading. It's still showing, okay, 29 up to 31. 29 up to 31. So now it's showing me plus or minus a, a total of two thousandths plus or minus a thousandth either way. So we pop that out. Let's grab another one and see how well it goes right back to the same point. Right down in the V, and see I'm I'm off a little bit right there. It's it's got it loaded. Uh, let's try it right there and see what kind of reading it does, and then let's readjust the gauge. So I've got down to 69. Now see that thing has gone way off. I'm gonna have to bring it back in here. Try to snug that down again. Push that in. I've got four. Yeah. See, it's pushing. It's pushing out of the V groove. I've got thirty-one and a half down to twenty-nine. 
Now I'm down to 27. Down to 25. See the thing, the whole thing is moving. And what's, what's happening here is it's coming up out of the B groove and or where the and where the little ballpoint thing is riding on the bullet itself is moving. So, you know, I'm not super impressed with this thing. I am probably going to, I, I am probably going to get a Sinclair. Um, cause you can see how that, how that gauge is, the whole damn thing's just moving. It's, uh, not what you would say precision quality. This, the little thumb screw back here doesn't hold it good and tight. That holds well. The V groove, um, it it locks in well, but the bullet seems to want to ride out of it sometimes. So it's very finicky in the entire setup, and it's just got too much slop in it to be a precision instrument. I want to go over here real quick and uh, check some pricing. So this uh, Forster, the coax case and cartridge inspector with dial at uh, Mid-South Shooter Supply is $98.11. Let's see if they have the Sinclair. So the Sinclair gauge is available on Sinclair's website and on Brownells for $119.99 with the analog dial. If you want the digital dial, it's $149.99. One other thing I wanted to point out, when this arrived, these little indicators, uh, which I imagine are for measuring your plus or minus maximum allowable tolerance that, you, that you'll have, that, that you're willing to accept for your cartridge or your case, uh, to, you know, mark one on each side. Uh, when this thing showed up, one of them was broken. You can see where they just snap on the uh, outer bezel right there, but uh, one of them was broken. And when I contacted them, I ordered the three pilots. They were like six or $7 each. And I told them about the broken indicator and they sent me another one free of charge. But you know, this is kind of a, kind of an indicator of your quality maybe that you ship something out with broken parts. So overall, not really impressed with this. I'm gonna buy me a Sinclair. So I hope that helped you guys on the setup of this thing and how it works. There weren't many videos on how to use it. Uh, the instructions are fairly straightforward, but not totally clear. Bottom line is, I don't think it's a great investment. It's got too many moving parts, too many places for it to, to get loose. And you saw when we were trying to run, uh, run some measurements on a, just a bullet and a case. It, uh, the case it did okay. The bullet, it wants to kind of move around a lot, jump around a lot. It's, uh, it doesn't lend itself to a lot of precision. And you know, if you're going to be a precision shooter, then you're going to have to have precision instrumentation. So, Krusty Old Marine, I've uh, got another video coming for you on some uh, uh, brass work and uh, some interesting things I've discovered. A lot of you pro probably may already know about brass. But uh, anyway, till next time, uh, shoot often and shoot straight. See ya.